Hello out there. Uh, today I want to go ahead and take a look at the M2T Warrior from Olight. And what you see here is what comes inside the packaging there. We've got the light, a battery magazine, that's what they call it, and two of their branded uh, CR123A batteries and the standard Olight uh, lanyard there. So there's a user manual with it too. So this uh, battery magazine thing here, if you haven't you haven't seen that before this just goes in uh, the light will actually work if you don't use it but that just goes uh, in the light so that uh, there's less rattle to it so it's kind of nice to have that it'll also just run off of a single 18650 battery uh, the packaging they changed their uh, packaging type that's what this one came in for the different battery types the bottom is the 18650 battery you have a higher turbo a higher high and an additional medium mode So just going over the modes here. So there's your battery magazine, but right now I've just got an 18650 in there. And this says uh, if you're just using the 123s, you'll have a maximum of 900 lumens for three minutes. That's your turbo mode. And then it'll drop down to 600 lumens for 85 minutes. And then you'll have a high of 400 for three hours and then medium of 60 lumens and that'll be 14 hours, low is 15 lumens at 42 hours. And then they're calling one lumen their moonlight mode on this and that's 30 days. That's with the one, two, three batteries and that's a peak intensity of 6,800 candela. That's on the turbo. But if you go with the 18650 battery, you will get a maximum output of 1200 lumens for three minutes. And then it drops down to 60 for 130 minutes. So two hours, 10 minutes. And then your high is 600 still, but it's uh, two hours and 20 minutes. And then you get an additional medium mode. They're calling it medium one, medium two. So medium one, when you're using the 18650, will be 250 lumens at six hours, 15 minutes. And then you're back to 60 lumens again, but now at 20 hours. 15 lumens again, but now at 70. And then your one lumen moonlight mode again, but at 50 days. So you get a significant uh, increase in runtime, and you gain an additional mode, and you, it's uh, increased the intensity with the output there. The maximum on the turbo is 9,500 candela, and of course 1.5 meter water resist or uh, impact resistance, and then IPX8 water resistance. So submersible 1.5 or two meters uh, for up to 30 minutes length that they're listing as 5.1 inches and the width is uh, one inch so that's about one inch there uh, battery installation it, yeah that's the manual on that so you can see uh, with the Olights uh, if you haven't used them before we can notice a little plus sign there they put their uh, plus they put their uh, button top faces towards the rear this is a pretty fat battery there but, so this is a 3400 milliamp battery and it fits in there. You can see it doesn't just slide straight out. You gotta tap it in, but it does go in okay. Uh, there's your threads. So it's still pretty well greased. After messing around, we're a very nice looking tail cap there on the inside. I don't foresee any problems with that one. Uh, the pocket clip, if you've seen the M2R Warrior, is the same thing as this. So without moving anything around, you can clip it right here with a bezel down, or you can use it from this side, bezel up. Uh, yeah, that'll fit on the bill of a hat, but this is heavier than I would want to have on the bill of my hat. And it looks like you could actually change the position of the clip to, to this side too, if you prefer. Uh, it does have some of the uh, crenulation. Does that still count as crenulation if it's not super sharp? does have some of that there but it's not sharp uh, you can see it's got the orange peel reflector in there and the uh, side switch here the typical uh, stiff one stiff side switch that o lights have so operation the only thing confusing about this the only thing that's really different for operating it is the tail cap it is not the same operation as the m2r it is a different operation so this you still have press it down part way and you got your turbo 
And then if you press and hold, oh, I just goofing up, huh? There we go. Gotta press it down all the way. It will do strobe, but if you just do a quick press, it stays on turbo. So with the M2R, you had to, if you wanted to go back and forth between constant turbo and strobe, you had to, you had to do it a different way. So the side switch though, it's still just a basic, okay, I didn't mean to do that. So there's the basic O-Lite. So I just locked it out. I held it down for two seconds, hold it down again, and you're, un you're unlocked again. So there's your moonlight and just hold it down. I locked it out again. So there's your low, hold it down, medium, medium, high. All right, so that's just the same thing as all the other old lights are. The, uh, you gotta give it a second in between button presses. So pretty good. Uh, I was surprised that I didn't have more trouble with the tail switch because it, it, you can see it's completely unprotected. It just protrudes out. I was surprised I didn't have problems with the accidental activation more. But you do have to, I mean, it's not super sensitive. You do have to press down a little bit to get it to run. Uh, so carrying this in the sheath, bezel up, and then carrying it in my pocket, bezel up. Uh, it happened a couple times, but it didn't happen constantly or even a lot. It was pretty seldom that it happened. And as far as functionality goes, if you turn the light on from the tail switch, you can still turn it off from the side switch. And if you turn it off from the side switch, you could still turn it off for the tail switch just by hitting either one. So it's a little bit more functionality that it was kind of nice, just a little convenience addition. And if you don't want to use the tail switch, everything is directly accessible from, from the side switch here. So when you're on, if you want turbo, just two clicks. And then strobe warning, if you want strobe, you just three clicks. And then you can just turn it off from either switch. Something else worth mentioning that I missed before is the uh, sheath that comes with it. Now this kind of looks like it's just more or less a generic uh, Olight sheath. Uh, this one is Velcro on the belt loops there. So there's no extra segment underneath the Velcro. It's just Velcro's the whole thing. So that's pretty much just your uh, standard belt that most people wear. And then if you don't, and then it will adjust all the way out to that. So it's not super wide, but it was good enough for me. Uh, I didn't have the Velcro come loose at all, getting in and out of vehicles, you know, bunches and bunches of times in a day. No problem, it's got that, that weird little ring thing on the back of it, the front. As if you just heard that is also Velcro. And if you notice the hole there, there's one there. There's also a gap at the top and bottom. Uh, didn't have any problems with the light trying to get out. Uh, the sides are just elastic or some type of elastic -y material, what have you. I, it, the first time I went to use the light, it was a little stiff to get the, get the light in the sheath. But after that, I left it in there for a day or two and then it was fine just using it like that. And I really didn't have much trouble with it after that. I was very surprised. And I even left the holster empty for three days and it shrank up a little bit back, but it was still really easy to get the thing in there. And even wearing gloves, wearing leather work gloves, I didn't really have any trouble getting the, getting the light in or out. Uh, the only thing I had was I would grab a little bit too high and that was my fault. So I, even though this is pretty generic, I actually really like this sheath. And to be honest, most of the, most of the flashlight sheaths I'm seeing just kind of suck, honestly. But this one, simple as it is, worked very easily for me and I really liked it. All right, so let's go ahead and do some uh, drop and some water tests there. And I got some beam shots. I'll put some of those onto the end of this. And let's go ahead and take care of that. Do some drop tests real quick here. Flashlight's powered on over right here, and let's see what happens. Now this is a little bit heavier than a lot of the lights I've tested. All right, well, it just uh, which is a little weird, but the light 
did survive. So let's go ahead and do a couple more drops. That's kind of weird. Haven't had that before. Let's give it one more here. Alright, so it looks like it's okay. Let's check the tail cap. Alright, it didn't loosen again, so that might have just been a freak thing. I haven't had a problem with that in the past. Olight M2T Warrior. I'm going to do some waterproof testing here. And as always, I will turn off the regular volume. May put up some crummy Adobe, Adobe music on there. But alright, let's go ahead and check this guy out. Do some waterproof testing. Light is on. seconds so I figure about a minute yeah I'll let it go just a few more seconds all right so that's about a minute there I'm not seeing anything weird with it I was a little worried after the drop test there okay so that was white out for the uh... all right yes yeah, not really working so well Now it is. Okay. Well, that's weird. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we're going to have to open this up. Try it off, open it up, and see uh, see what it's like. Go ahead and well, let's throw these uh, one, two, three batteries back in here. These are the batteries that came with it, so it works. They do work, and it just turned off, but it did cycle. All right, so there's the moonlight, and it turned off when I did that. There's the moonlight. Oh, it's gone through quicker. Forget about that. The turbo works and strobe works. All right. So yeah, I don't know what the. It, I guess it got wet on that outer layer, but the light does still work. Uh, it went to, it went off. Just holding the button down, it went off. So I'm going to say that uh, either something got jarred loose or, and I don't know. I mean, we cycled through it a few times. So I'm going to say uh, that uh, did not pass waterproof test because it wasn't having problems until. We did waterproofing and I made sure the tail cap was on tight because it had loosened up when we did the drop test. So I made sure it was on there tight. So I guess this guy's going back. I'm going to have to contact Olight and I will give an update. All right, so last night after I did the waterproof test with the M2T, the side switch was giving me a little bit of trouble. It wasn't acting properly. The tail switch did act properly. I had no problems with that whatsoever. Uh, but the side switch was not acting properly. So I went, I've spent about pretty close to 24 hours. I left it open, no tail cap, no batteries, just to see if it would dry out. And it does seem to be working better. See right there, I'm holding it down and it's not shifting modes. And then it just went off. So it was working. Not no, it didn't come on at all there. Well, and now it's on turbo. And it strobe there. High, low, medium, high. 
So it'll go through a couple of cycles, and then it was uh, it would pause on me. I let go of the button there, and so that's been five seconds, and it just changed modes up. That click is the button, and it just went to strobe. So the side switch is definitely not working properly. I was hoping that it would, but so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, contact Olight and see what they want to do about it.